All right, welcome to episode 20 of the Iron Will Collective Podcast. Thank you for being here today. So to pick up on the conversation that we were just ha- having before we hit record right now, talking about lost wisdom and how that may happen over time. I know kind of odd subject for the pod, but we're going to get started with that. Hopefully get you thinking a little bit because it's got us thinking. So if you could just quickly repeat the short anecdote um, that you just mentioned think that's worth hearing yeah so we were hanging out with a friend a couple of nights ago and we happen to have a like an old-timey traditional european song playing in the background because man when i tell people i listen to everything i freaking mean it from that romanian wedding music all the way down to that aboriginal country but let's be honest here does that make you a hipster or would it be more genuine if you listen to it on like a uh one of those things with the big horns on it (laughs) what what are those called phonograph yeah okay yeah Yeah. phonograph um you know i think that would that would both equal parts make you a hipster and more cool like in that specific case but i don't know i I actually like it it's it's good stuff that music i'll tell you what (laughs) so we were jamming out to that and our friend who was visiting the house, he was like, yeah, this reminds me of my grandparents. Back in the day, we always used to get together and have these family traditions where they would sing and dance and like they would do these like specific prayers. Uh, it's definitely religious stuff for them, but it was, it was also part of their tradition and part of their background and who they were, where they came from. But he told me, yeah, after my grandparents died, we don't do any of that stuff anymore. Nobody knows how to. So they just let that tradition fizzle away. So, and we hit play right after this. So where I wanted to pick up was in saying how easily it can be to lose knowledge. And we have to consider that, you know, modern humans, anatomically modern humans have been around for like, well over 200,000 years, like hundreds of thousands of years here. So an almost incomprehensible amount of time being as, you know, the normal human lifespan nowadays is like 70s, 80s. And, that, that's, and that's like as long as it's ever been as I far mean, yeah, as we the, know. Yeah, probably like the longest ever being like, you know, in the, the early hundreds. Yeah. But uh, back in those times too, or like many, many years ago before the advent of modern medicine, lifespan likely be average lifespan likely be a lot shorter right. but that's neither here nor there what i'm trying to get at is that over the span of human history there what we don't know that was learned in the past how much of that is gone forever do you think and i am in the court that i think someone somewhere knows this stuff like someone figures this stuff out and if they don't it's it's got to be written down somewhere I mean, I think it'd be... It'd be coveted. And oh, like, yeah, absolutely. Because, dude, that's like ancient... It's literally ancient secrets. Especially if it's stuff that actually works. Like, think about the pyramids and how they built them. It's been a long debated subject, but I I don't... They obviously didn't have machinery and stuff like that. Yeah. And we, we pretty much you know, don't have any evidence of that. So how were they making these technologically advanced feats of architecture with like nothing that we found yeah. is like the crazy thing. And so just that as like a, a broad example of, you know, everything, you know, below that and what has been forgotten is crazy. So, okay. This is my theory. My theory is that we haven't had any one person or any group of people that, you know, obviously that we know about because my, physical reach of people is not nearly as big as others have like if i had to guess i probably I don't know. know there were a lot of people on the yacht last saturday for your party <laughs> fuck yeah that's I mean, right i forgot about that well, yeah i mean you back at the mega yacht yeah if you've got a yacht let alone a mega yacht yeah, it's a mega yacht. you got you know a lot of people well, so don't okay. sell yourself short man okay well i won't sell myself short here but <laughs> yacht aside, <laughs> mega yacht aside. <laughs> um, like you can park cars in that thing. Yeah, I mean, 
chances are I don't know I don't know anybody who's like pushed it to the limits mentally and physically and applied themselves to ancient knowledge that we already do have. So think of it this way. What's if what it takes is a combination of things like ingredients coming together to make a cake? And the cake is like the the enlightened person or group of people. Well, you know, like the story of like the philosopher's stone, kind of like that. If it can turn any metal into gold, type of thing. Yeah. Oh, well, alchemy. That's that was like the birth of science. How weird is that? Alchemy really lent itself to scientific thought and the the whole process itself, because people really started getting a- analytical, and that's all it took was the the desire for gold. And for those of you who don't know the scientific process, that is to develop a theory and then without testing or anything, it's law. It's right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you can think about testing it. That usually yeah, thinking makes that's probably gone too far. Right, though, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to make it less right. So you just make your theory and then boom, that's science. It, it's fabulous. It's great. But anyway, anyway, so you're trying to make this cake like a spiritual being, a person here on, on earth, somebody that is fully integrated with aspects of consciousness that most people do not like consider ever on a daily basis or even periodically. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So that's the thing. Maybe we already have the answers. Like maybe we haven't lost as much as we think it's already here. The only thing is we're not yet at a point where we can look at it and actually comprehend what's going on. It's like if, if I don't know, somehow you took like an advanced level physics textbook and it somehow threw it in the past before the invention of physics, people would look at it and be like, what the fuck is this? Like, what is That's this? That's how I, I would look at it. it. <laughs> yeah. Don't same need, here. Don't need to go to the past. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> Uh, without going through the process to understand it and then fully, you know, fully understand it, it's of little use. And I think my theory is we are starting to understand it. There's definitely been a shift in the perception. Like I think the '60s brought in a lot of new age stuff, with which brought awareness to these types of topics. But only now, after it's gone through the scrutiny of of science are we starting to discover more and the science is like the psychoanalysts the people who studied like dreams and the inner workings of people's psyches and their consciousness uh the people who tried to connect that back to religion which is old as as old as we can tell and so they they did that work they made it a lot more plainly obvious to the the common skeptic that there is a lot of stuff we don't know that you know just lies within your brain right now like you're capable of doing things you don't even know of and that's because we have these limitations that have come about either just over time or because we fell into a way of thinking that was limiting in in a certain way well have i got news for you fella at my old job, our old job, you know him too. Mm. He's got limitless pills. Walk into the break room, see him taking pills. I'm like, what are those? <laughs> He's like, these are my limitless pills. So, pharmaceutically hacking your brain. There we go. Yeah. That actually, uh, all jokes aside, that might be a real thing. Who knows? Like, that might be some, like, deep secret FBI training, like... Some like men at, who stare at goats type of thing. Dude, yeah, that <laughs> um, movie's sick. But I think that, I think that it can be learned is the thing. Whatever these things Absolutely. are, just like physics, yeah, it can be learned. It's a process, though. So. Exactly, but you're never gonna know or think to pursue it if you never even know it exists. So there's got to be a vast amount of unseen. Uh, I like think about other animals. Other animals have different or stronger senses than us, which allow them to really operate in a foreign way to you and I. So we have our sight, our hearing, our smell, mm-hmm. our feel. Yeah. Um, and there's 
I don't know why I always I lose it at four. <laughs> uh, wh- which one taste, did you say? Taste. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so either like some animals have a super, super strong sense of smell, like uh, even like a dog or something. Mm-hmm. Get that basset hound or something, especially. <laughs> yeah. The, they have a super keen sense of smell uh, that goes far beyond what we can sense. So you've got to, I think it, is worth considering that there's probably other senses that we like don't even know about, like things that go within you. Dude, intuition, I think, is a sense. And no, I, I, I agree. A lot of people will attribute that to just like f- biological happenings within your body, like a response to external the gut stimuli. Feeling. Yeah, but I think it goes beyond that too. And if you look in nature, you can see these things reflected too. Like animals also have similar things like, like intuition and instincts. And I think it can be observed if you, if you spend enough time, like Jane Goodall hanging out with the chimps discovered, holy crap, they're not just like wild savages. They have like complex family structures. They have a lot going on. There's a lot more than meets the eye. So it's just surface level. If you think a a chimp is simple, they're not. But it will rip your face off. Oh hell yeah! So it, don't have yeah. a pet chimp. No, they are wild, mm-hmm. but they're and they're super. They strong. have their own little chimp, like life going on. That's but, why we're putting out within the next few months the chimp training program. Because if you want to be strong like chimp, <laughs> you must train like chimp. <laughs> Dude, unbelievable amounts of strength. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have a chimp deadlift competition. <laughs> Like they they couldn't get even them do it. Dude, their arms are too long. Oh, that's true. They'd have to do mad deficit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like like a foot and a half deficit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd still be sick though. They'd probably beast it. They probably would. Oh my god, and they and they could probably learn how to do it. Oh yeah, absolutely. If you feed them enough. Yeah, and even if like peanut butter. The or crazy thing about like animals too, is like, if they want to achieve something like if he wants to you want to do a 800 pound chimp deadlift and that chimp's body like physically can't handle he gets snapped up doing it he might just pull through and do it anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude they don't have that governor like we do. it's different he's not thinking about the future he's like fuck it all right now i'm doing this for the peanut butter <laughs> like, they'll they'll do whatever it takes i think yeah They've got something that we don't. And we're going to find out what it is, and we're going to make it a powder, and we're going to sell it it to you. That's right. So be on the lookout. Um, We've got the chimp workout plan. We've got a pre-workout in in the works, too. (laughs) That one, uh, really excited to share details. Unfortunately, um, it's still top secret, though. Yeah, we're getting the proprietary blend (laughs) down. Dude, supplements have gotten out of hand. I was telling you earlier in the gym while we were working out, crazy ass deload session today by the way yeah like the wildest deload you could ask for damn actually maxed out it it did get intense though with the blood flow restriction yeah uh tell us a little bit about blood flow restriction uh note that we are not experts yet we are very new to this yeah so uh just an introduction though to again you don't know what you don't know so here open your eyes to bfr so okay i have not read I'm going to preface this with, I have not read up uh, very recently on blood flow restriction, but Elliot had mentioned it the other day and said, hey, you want to give this a try? And so I- It's like doing pot. Yeah. Well, I mean, all I want is more friends and for people to think I'm cool. And so that's why I agreed to it. And- It's all there is in life. You know, yeah, it was awesome. I cracked open a cold one. (laughs) by poking a hole through the side after shaking the can and I, I drank it all up right then and there. So we got these, uh, these mini bands and I think just a standard like fettuccine band that goes in a loop. So it's, it's a little circle. You get these on Amazon, wherever you buy your fitness gear, get the iron wheel collective mini band series made out of pure recycled prostate, <laughs> super <laughs> elastic. Interlaced with aluminium. <laughs> and strong. Yeah, yeah. Skunk? No, uh, elastic and strong. Oh. If you want, we could do the... Uh, I think skunk's going in the pre-workout, so... What about some gronk? <laughs> uh, screw that guy. <laughs> Isn't that a drink? Gronk? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, a guy. Oh, I thought you meant like Rob Gronkowski, the football player. <laughs> oh, you know what it is? 
Um, I never knew who he, well, I didn't know like who he was when I saw this. It was an energy drink. I and think it's Kronk you're thinking of. No, dude, this one said Gronk. I really? think it was Gatorade oh, you, or something. You totally might be right. Like, I have no idea. It's like they replaced the label temporarily, and it said Gronk. And that whole week, I was just like, oh, man, I need to get some Gronk. I need to get my Gronk on. We know that you would, some Gronk. We both know that you would never cheat on Bang. No, you only drink I Bang. I only thought about it, but I didn't that's, actually that's drink That's just as bad. Gronk. I hope you flagellated. Oh, I, I, Obviously. I did... Uh, I did a couple extra sets of ass exercises for the Bang God. Band walks with the BFR bands. Oh, and shit. And we're back. And we're back. So, blood flow restriction. You take these BFR bands, these mini bands, and you get them. I just want to note really quick that yeah. mini bands probably aren't the preferred tool for this. Like, you can probably be better mm. off getting an actual Good product point. made yeah. for this. Or uh, there are. A lot of other things. Essentially, you don't want it to be something that's too tight or you could like risk not getting off of you or something like that. That would be pretty bad. Right. So you want it to be like tight enough to be like slightly uncomfortable, but you don't want to like start lose feeling in your hands or like start turning purple or anything like that. No so, discoloration. Yeah. Even though we had some discoloration today, now thinking back on it, I, uh, <laughs> I thought it was like you make yourself an artificial farmer tan. <laughs> but um, see, I'm not... Only being, you know, one of the first few times doing this, I'm not sure if that is a result of just a a general increase in blood flow to the area yeah. because we're doing bicep curls. So uh, jury's still out for me on that. I don't know what the story was. I don't know if that was bad or good, but I think we had an okay tightness, an acceptable tightness, not a dangerous one. Yeah, I agree. It was uncomfortable, but not to the point to where I felt like I was in pain or like I was losing circulation, like no tingling in the fingertips or anything. That's always a bad sign. Oh, I had a little Unless bit of tingling. Unless you're squatting. To be honest. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. It wasn't, it was just like a very little bit. That's because so you're like, thick, dude. You need slightly bigger bands. <sighs> That's not true. <laughs> or I, it's uh, actually just uh, poor nerve quality in the right arm, as we know from my, uh, uh, my performance. So you see on the overhead press, when it starts to get tough, when we're going you know, in a higher intensity range, my right arm, my dominant right arm, will give out on me before my left arm, even oh, though yeah, like yeah. everything about else about it, like all, most other lifts that you do with it, um, other than like upper body push, like uh, maybe some bench press or some overhead press will do it. But like, you know, curling and triceps and stuff like that feels stronger than the left arm. So it's, I'm blaming it it's weird, right? on the alcohol. I'm blaming it on that. It's the nerve pain, the nerve tension something i don't know i think i think that's something worth exploring for myself somehow i think i'm going to have to do a self dissection in order to find out (laughs) just rub an ice cube on the spot (laughs) for like five minutes make it numb and didn't they do that in the punisher the original movie i have no idea you know i don't watch movies oh yeah well this was like back in the 2005 Oh, I especially didn't watch movies back then, unless it was <laughs> Drill Bit Taylor. Oh, yeah. That's like Rambo, but <laughs> kids. <laughs> for, for the elderly. Um, so, yeah, okay, blood flow restriction. In this case, if you haven't gathered it by this point, what we were doing is a bicep curl with a band near our shoulder, so kind of in the armpit, just... I'd say mid deltoid and upper tricep area. So trying to get it, as you said yesterday, as proximal as you can. So as close to the middle of your body as you can. But in this case, we let them sit a little bit lower. I think just for comfort, because the bands probably would have had a hard time staying if we pulled them all the way up. Yeah, they're kind of rolling around when they're higher up. So like if you put it a little bit lower, they tend to stay in place. Yeah, And uh, then from there, we... We decided to go with the incline curl variation because we really wanted to focus on that lengthening, so the eccentric of the portion of the lift. And holy balls, it was hot. It was toasty. It was too spicy for the pepper at some points there. So my first set, I went to 24, and I just wanted to like see if I could. It, it was really tough. And in this case, we were working with a lighter weight. What, 17... 
and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We only go by halves here. <laughs> we don't do. I just like it's an OCD thing. I don't want to have any like whole numbers and and it, it, it's whatever. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. uh, we micro load because <laughs> all we have are one one pound plates. Yeah. So, so I mean, you gotta make do. Yeah. The, they're the same price as the bigger ones, but we wanted to look like we were richer or something. Yeah, they're actually the same like size too, so it looks like we're lifting a lot, but we're really not. Dude, that's they're sick. made out of styrofoam. Sick. Freaking beast. <laughs> You're like Wolverine <laughs> at the beach, you know? Man, like, just respect. Get out of here with those two thousand five movies. <laughs> <laughs> I can't now. I can't. You're like Daredevil but with sight. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> these are all just flying right over my head. Oh, damn. <laughs> Let's talk about Veggie Tales. Then <laughs> maybe I can contribute. The Captain Cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> Never watched it. Yeah. They did Noah's Ark like 10 times, though. I know that. Well, yeah, every ancient civilization had their own flood myth. Dude, Veggie Tales was trying to tell us something. They woke. But what they were trying to tell us, I don't know. I, I don't know. You must replay. That one went over my head. But blood flow restriction is a, a different type of evil, and I, I've been really liking it. My bicep by the third set felt like, my, my right bicep in particular, felt the craziest burn that it's ever had. And so for that reason alone, I'd recommend that if you're interested, you should look into this, look further into this, um, and then you know decide how you're gonna go about doing it safely. So you don't lose a freaking arm. Yeah, make sure your sources are credible. Wikipedia. And, uh, and definitely, yeah. you know, start and slow and listen to your body because yeah. it does, it feels crazy, like John said. And um, I was just flexing my arms right now and we finished working out, uh, I don't know, probably an hour ago and I still feel some residual fatigue. So it uh, it's definitely an interesting tactic. Yeah, and... Just another tool in the bag, so I think it's cool that we're doing this because we're doing a deload week this week, and so it's giving us a little bit of extra, well, it's giving us an opportunity to do things that we wouldn't normally do when the intensity is just so much higher, because it takes longer, because we only have a set of bands right now, but also the fact that it causes so much more fatigue. Like, I don't know, do you think this is something you, you would see yourself doing fairly regular? Mm, I wonder if it would take a higher consistency with it in order to truly bear the fruit mm -hmm. that it has to offer. Like it's, it's not that I don't think that it's a case of being better or worse. Mm -hmm. It's just different. So a different way to get to where you want to go. Yeah. So I think that while doing a strength training block, which we have planned mm -hmm. for next week, I would probably say do it sparsely. I've already cut down the amount of sets of arms in the program just because I think that will also help us in order to decrease wear and tear on the joints. Yeah. So um, we'll see how it goes. And we'll see if we want to pepper in some BFR. I'm down to, but I just I can't say that we'll, I'll be wanting to take that punishment after getting mashed on the squats or something like that, even no. like doing lower body, not even working the arms, just like seriously, because that takes a lot out of you. It does, yeah. Mentally, it, I had to, I had to really focus. Come the last few reps of the last few sets, it was. It's because what happens is you you fatigue, you get the burn, and normally you take your like I don't know, one minute rest and you feel good, but this is not normally. Well, at all. with the bands on your arms too, it it's exactly. So what I think one of the, one of the attributes that makes this a, a valid method of training, not just some BS is that it reduces your ability to cycle out the like cellular waste products yeah. from, from this activity. So, uh, you're accumulating like, um, nitrogen, lactic acid, the things that would be often attributed with the burn and you're not letting it escape. Right. So uh, I guess something to do with that is beneficial for, I mean, maybe it just like brings you to fatigue in a, a different way and more intensely uh, damaging the muscle in order to 
do what you set out to do, damage it and repair it. I, I'm not sure. So, again, we'll come back at you with some better info on this as soon as we are more knowledgeable. Yeah, I think we should make a post about it as soon as we pick up some info here. Um, that That's going to be a cool one. I'd be excited to do that. Then we can record some video or something. Yeah, and this is uh, often uh, uh, considered a more advanced technique. Mm -hmm. So if you are just starting out, you might want to refine your skill with just your basic. Yeah, basic exercises first and focus on that and then uh, get what you can get out of that because you're going to get a ton out of that when you first start. Yeah. So I don't think you really need to to get complex. Not yet. So No, no crazy variations needed. And that's the thing. Like, like I mentioned earlier, it's just another tool. And so it's not something that you need to do to progress. It's not something that you need to do if you want big arms. I mean, obviously, I have the biggest arms I've ever seen. So Dude, your arms are looking good, honestly. Yeah, they're like, okay. We were talking watermelons earlier. Okay. Swap meat watermelons? I once got confused for a watermelon. <laughs> no. Just didn't, that was your head, though. <laughs> Damn it, you're right. No, you guys should see this guy's triceps. Looking, I can't. Looking well developed. I can't see them. And I, I feel like they look better from my perspective than you would be able to see in the mirror. Dude, that's Especially because, you know, you don't really see yourself, like, lifting in the mirror. So, you, I mean, we don't have any mirrors in the gym, at least. Yeah. One day you'll see yourself lifting again. Dude, it's crazy. Maybe like, tomorrow. Yeah. No, you no, we're, we're lifting here tomorrow. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to continue because I'm... Really looking forward to this uh, strength block that we have coming up. It's bench press strength, your fave. Yeah. Well, it, it, not in the past, but it's becoming, it's getting there. Um, overhead press is my most fave oh, by far. Yeah, but you have, between the time that we started and the time that we finished, I think that your one rep max, if I were you, I would have been pleased with it at least. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. It was... I'm just not satisfied because it doesn't feel like like I really accomplished that weight. So we one rep max. Oh my god, English right? One rep max tested. It's that mental fatigue from the one rep max <laughs> testing still. My resigned. CNS is tapped yeah, out. Like, <laughs> 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 Cannot take it any longer. That's what CNS stands for. Cannot take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're we're running at top gear here, everybody. <laughs> happy happy podcast. Happy day, anniversary. Whatever you're to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Birthday. Mm -hmm. Um what was I saying? Oh, okay. So, dude, anytime I see a picture of like my back or something while working out, it it's like I analyze it in detail. Not because I'm going, Oh my god. Yeah, because you never get to see it. Johnny yeah. Bravo over here. No, you're right. I never get to see it. So I know that subjective measurements are supposed to be really important, just as important as objective ones. The thing is, it's very easy to get lost in, in that and be hypercritical or just, you know, looking every single day for too long and then not being able to notice difference when differences when you actually get them. I never notice any differences in myself unless it's like weight loss related which like i'm currently not trying to lose any weight so like day in day out i feel like as long as i'm not you know becoming overweight yeah like monitor that yeah but like i don't see new muscle i don't feel like i look any bigger so but i look at myself way too much so that's probably why i never considered that you 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 become an eyesore you're just there now and yeah. you like even if it's gonna have a subtle change you're not gonna notice because you Look at it every day. It's like watching grass grow. Like you could sit there all oh, day God. and it's going to pop up so fast. But that's why they say the grass is always greener because when you're watching your own grass, like it doesn't look that great after a while and you're convinced that it needs to be better. And so you look at somebody else and your perspective is already skewed because, well, first of all, you never, I mean, I don't want to say never, but you probably hardly ever get a good, honest, like objective view of your of your own physique. Like, yeah, really, a like a good, honest photo without posing or doing anything crazy. Like, can you just look at your body and then judge where you're at? We need to have a photographer follow us around for candids. 
dude, yeah, good idea. But we're going to have to be in our underwear, so (laughs) you can actually see any sort of changes. Because, like, that would be even harder. Like, just, I I don't know. You couldn't see anything too close if you can't see anything without them. So, bottom line, moral of the story is we will always be small because we have... We have decided that that is our fate just by saying it. Yeah. Like I was saying earlier, like we were saying earlier, the magic of words. So from now on, I'm not going to look in the mirror and call myself fat. I'm not going to look in the mirror and like tell myself I am never going to be big. The things that I've been telling myself for the last few years. <laughs> um so time to abandon that and see how that works. Yeah, change your mindset. Honestly, like speak yourself up. I can see it resulting in you looking bigger to yourself. Like if you stop poisoning the well and just like convincing yourself that nothing's changed. Yeah. I bet once you get rid of that and stop looking at yourself with such a critical eye all the time, then you probably you'll probably even grow. You'll probably legitimately grow. Yeah, dude. Okay, so ancient secrets. In all honesty, I think that the way I try to go about it, because I've bounced back from both extremes, um, more so on the lower end of the spectrum, where you just like freaking hate and loathe the way that you look and feel, and so it's a it's a real negative thing, not fun at all. But then I've also been on the the upside of that, where I've felt like, holy shit, I feel great, and you know, you can start to think too highly of yourself because you made a little bit of progress. So nowadays I try to land more in the middle. And so when I look at myself, there, there's like obviously going to be two different perspectives. There's the one that goes, my God, look at you. You belong in a garbage can. <laughs> and then there's the other side that's like, fuck yeah, bro. Come on, let's go. Let's do this. Come on, the bitches are waiting, bro. And so... To like take those two voices and make them shut the hell up and come together. And so now it's more like you're perfect where you are, but you can always be better. Be better. And so that's, that seems to have worked more in my case. It at least helped me with, uh, with like rebounding fits of, I don't know, lots of effort and then very, very little. Because when you listen to those very contradicting voices you'll probably get like i don't know in my case at least i'll speak for myself i'd listen to that negative voice and i'd be like all right i need to do something now i'm gonna go in hard i'm gonna plan all my meals make sure my program is is on point and i'm gonna make this happen i'll follow follow everything to the t and i could ride that wave until the other voice kicks in and then you, you start to chill out And so it's just this constant back and forth. I don't want that because that's not conducive to long-term goals and it's not conducive to self-discipline or actually maintaining a habit. I mean, all of this takes consistency. And so that's why I had to find something for me that worked, which was like, hey, bro, you're perfect, but you need to be better. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, I have trouble controlling my inner voices like that, like... Mine are just like, go eat a block of cheese. <laughs> no. um, I, I agree with what you're saying. That's a good tactic to go about. And I think that if you can stay true to that and you can keep your thoughts on track, you will definitely benefit, if not physically, mentally. And that's probably more important, honestly, because if, if you can be right in the head and if you can be happy and satisfied with what you got, then does anything else really even matter? I mean, hey, I got to that point too. And if you're not careful, you start turning nihilistic and you're like, holy crap, you know, in a thousand years, we're all going to die. Nobody's going to be around. I'm going to eat a whole pizza. (laughs) What (laughs) even matters? (laughs) You follow that rabbit hole too long and nothing matters. And the next thing you find yourself doing is sitting around and going, I feel like shit. Because you still have biological needs and those needs require. You know, your body is required to move in order to perform at its best. And so it does matter, I think, because if you don't do it, it doesn't take too long before you find out how assy it feels. If you you know, sitting around. Well, uh, the body and the mind in some ways are separate. In some ways, they greatly influence each other. So that's why 
fitness and taking care of your body first and foremost should be everybody's priority if you want to do everything that in your control mm. to make sure that you live a lengthy quality life and you're not miserable and pain all the time. Um, so I think if you want to pursue any of that other stuff, that's great do it, but you must respect the needs of your physical body just as much as you would your, your quest for knowledge or anything like that quest for truth. Like you're not going to be able to do that if you are dead. So <laughs> back to the nihilism like yeah we're all gonna die at some point yeah. but we have a lot that we could possibly learn and bring into this reality that we are in now so you could either not and you could either suffer because of that you know whether it be through poor health or a death with regret because you never did what you wanted to do or anything like that or you could do a little bit more work take care of that body and start to pursue what means something to you yeah and and find a way to get that done that will be the goal so then you'll have to endure many obstacles many that will come from inside foot you can always find a way around them is a thing they're always there's always a way you just have to apply yourself yeah so like with you with uh consolidating the voices in your head that is hopefully going to pay off big time for you and everyone's going to be different too because we all got different stuff going on in our head mm -hmm. like the cheese so <laughs> for all of you listening no you can do it yeah definitely that okay that reminded me of a saying it's like an old african proverb they say if there's no enemy within the enemy outside can do you no harm hey I think there's something to that because then what you gain are the skills of confidence or at least you are able to be courageous because being courageous is it means that you're still scared like you're scared to do something but you do it anyway and so that happens all the goddamn time in the weight room it happens all the goddamn time in life like it, it happens i mean if you've ever had a job interview you know what i'm talking about you know what? it's the exact same <laughs> feeling because when you're about to go up to the bar and you know you have a heavy lift <laughs> and you know it's something that is going to absolutely suck yeah. it's going to be freaking hard that's the same feeling you get inside like for me at least like your heart <laughs> starts beating it's like that straight up like anxiety slash like <laughs> adrenaline adrenaline release yep and uh that's funny that you say that because that is just like what you feel like waiting for like a job interview or something like that yeah it's like just like just anticipation. Yeah, You're like, just I'm like, ready oh, to go. I'm ready to go. go. Like, uh, I'm here. It's time. I don't know how this is going to play out, but this is obviously important enough for me to be here. So I'm uh, hoping for the best, but <laughs> yeah. we'll see. So that's just like lifting. You're like, it's obviously important enough to be here or yeah. be here. And you just know it's going to be like physically painful. Dude. It's like not painful, painful, but like physically like freaking it's hard. Grueling. It's yeah, grueling. Mentally there exhausting we go. Yeah. too. Oh, like God. it takes so much focus. I mean, when we were when we were doing those heavy box squats like two weeks ago or a week ago, it was the squat zone had to get into the squat zone. Otherwise, you fail. That weight you is fail just like not me. gonna move. Yeah, like it's crazy, but it makes such a big difference. That, that your mind your mind plays a huge role in your ability to perform, and that's not just with weights. But if you can if you can learn to foster that same type of like resiliency and be able to push past a fear and accept it like hey i'm not unnormal i'm not abnormal for being no, afraid unnormal. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a a weird person just because i'm feeling nervous that's normal but it's the human condition yeah, don't don't let that stop you like okay i had a i had an honest talk with uh with my boss at work and I was actually pretty nervous about having this honest conversation because it was very direct and we were being very direct with each other. I thought, okay, I'm putting myself at risk here by being vulnerable, by being honest about what I'm feeling and thinking. But if I'm not, then that's going to cause some, that's building up the enemy within. And I don't want to do that. So I need to slay this little dr like dragon while it's still a lizard before it's a it's a big thing i don't want to carry resentment around and so 
there was the importance. That was the reason. And so despite being scared, still did it anyway. And it turned out to be all right. It was just fine. Just like going up for those squats. And you go, oh my God, like I've never done three hundred, like over 300 pounds. What is this going to be like? I'm scared. See, life is really but a game. You're playing a game. Like there, there is really no cut and dry right or wrong for a lot of things. Yeah, there is for some things. Yeah, you don't really want to go around like stabbing innocent people in the face or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. I, I think that's some bad. Days. But, you know, that's just me. Like that doesn't mean it is bad. Might be good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been doing this all peaceful thing all wrong. Yeah. But I think that if you have the courage to step outside of your comfort zone like that, then you are ensuring that at very least you will experience some sort of growth. Like you'll be better for it regardless of the outcome. The worst, like picture like you're going to ask a girl out or something and, or a boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, you, you're very nervous about this because this is very important to you, obviously again, or else you wouldn't be there doing it mm -hmm. or, or contemplating it to this point where it is causing you anxiety. The worst thing that can happen is that they say no. And that for a lot of people can be crushing. So to build that inner resiliency is actually failure is going to really help you with that. So it's common for a lot of really successful people to have a history of a lot of failure mm -hmm. before they get there because that, that calluses them and that shows them like that's nothing. Like it doesn't phase them. So if you can, if you can eliminate the fear of failure, then you can go off and do anything. Yeah. You're still going to be nervous probably. And you're still going to oh, yeah. be anxious, but which is normal. Yeah. But if like things don't go your way, things don't go your way. And that is normal. Exactly. That's what you got to say is like, this isn't like the world doesn't revolve around you and not everything is just like made to serve your fancy. So you got to understand that. And, uh, if you are someone who thinks like that, like quit it right now because, uh, you are going to make a kind of a tough life for yourself. But, yeah. um, yeah, I think that don't let a failure knock you down and not get back up and watch Rocky. <laughs> Dude, Rocky's like <laughs> such a cool movie, bro. You need to watch Rocky, bro. You seen Apollo, bro? <laughs> you seen Creed? Uh, oh, Apollo, it's not even called Apollo, Apollo 13. <laughs> yeah. You get to see how big of a Rocky fan yeah. I Yeah, we watch movies. I watched the first four Rockies and uh, it, was, it w didn't take long to notice there was a trend there was a pattern. It's the underdog story dude it's the same freaking movie they just change well, yeah, he just fights different people yeah and they change his clothes and he, i don't know in one movie he loses his his spark you know because he was too rich and pampered he kind of turned like how apollo creed was i don't know cool stories very uh inspirational but but they're milked Dude, you can't you can't watch them consecutively like I did because I don't know. My brother used to really like Rocky, so he did used you do to, consecutive though. Oh yeah, he oh, watched my them all. God, but oh. um, each to their own. Hey, so yeah, if yeah. it works for you, man, if it works for you, like the first one worked for me. That one actually put my ass into gear. I felt like, hey, I don't want to be a bum, <laughs> <laughs> and so I started like owning my shit and doing trying a little bit harder. And so anything that adds fuel to your fire. Uh, to the fire under your ass and makes you like work a little harder or push yourself a little more so you can go the distance and you can accomplish what you want then that's cool it may not be fun but that doesn't make it a bad thing not everything yeah. in your life is going to be fun and that's another harsh reality that uh you have to get used to if you want to make anything happen is like you know you can't have every meal be the most delicious thing that you've ever had. Like sometimes you're going to have to eat something that is not your favorite thing, but you know, it's the right thing to eat type of thing. Or actually, you know, you should, you actually never have to do that. You could live your whole life eating Cheetos for every meal. <laughs> um, but then uh, that's, that's not going to be good either. But anyways, I think that being prepared for things to be sour sometimes is also going to, help you with that resiliency and uh, again another way is probably through failure to understand that so bottom line is i just think everyone needs to go out and fail at something 
ASAP, whether it be a lift, do it safely, don't hurt yourself, <laughs> whether it be a uh, going and asking that person out that you wanted to ask out, and they say no, make sure they say no. If they say yes, you're going to have to uh, cancel the date or something. <laughs> and uh, no. Bottom line. Stand up for yourself. <laughs> you know, do some... do Stalk them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make you nervous? Well, there you go. Do it. <laughs> We're actually recording this podcast right outside your window right now. Yeah, go look. (laughs) (laughs) But I think that these are all great points, all things to think about at very least consider. There's a lot more information on all of these subjects in the World Wide Web. Where do you think we we come up with this stuff? This didn't just come to us. We learn about it in the books and the the web pages, the the Wikipedia. Yeah, they came to me in a dream. <laughs> but you never know like what the kind bobcats. Of, oh yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. God, that was such a weird dream. It I had have to mean something. Man. I don't know. There's don't three know. of them. Uh numerology. Oh, it, it was yeah. only three? I thought it was like I thought it was a bunch of them. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure it was three. So, I had this dream like a couple yeah. months ago that I was in my parents' kitchen. <laughs> And these, like, three bobcats were, like, in the kitchen, and they came out from under the stove. (laughs) And they were threatening, I guess, because I I had to kill them. So I cut their heads off. That was how I killed them. I just, like, they must not have been that threatening (laughs) if I was able to, like, cut all three of their heads off individually. Wow. But I, uh, I threw them in the garbage can in the backyard, just like threw him in a bag and threw him in the garbage can. And then this lady, she came around like the backyard and, and she's like snooping around the backyard, like outside the wall. So I like asked her, I was like, what are you doing here? And she's like, oh, we're just looking for these bobcats. They're endangered. <laughs> 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 like we saw them around here and we're just looking for them. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And basically the dream ended with the police at my house and I woke up. Very, these dreams are not restful. But they are extremely interesting. And yeah. I took the time after that dream because it was so weird to, like, tell it the story again to Jesselyn. And uh, I think it was to her at least. Or I, somehow I remembered it this well, this far ahead. Yeah. And I don't think I'll ever forget that dream. So <laughs> any uh, dream analysts out there, please tell me what that means. That was crazy. So the way they'd go about doing it is they'd say, what does that remind you of? I don't know. I have a (laughs) lot of, I have like a lot of dreams about being wanted by like the authorities. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be because of that. It's like one of my biggest goals in life is to never go to jail. Like I'm not a criminal or anything, so I have no danger, but I want to keep it that way because going to jail sounds horrible. That sounds (laughs) like for a long uh, sentence, that would be, in my opinion, a fate worse than death. Like that sounds bad. You could get um, ripped, though. You could get you ripped, could. yeah. So you can make the most out of it. But yeah, I still don't want to go to jail. No, so maybe agreed. that's why I have these dreams. Not but a good I have, plan. Yeah. To go to jail, I mean. Yeah. You want a good plan? Let's get on the chimp strength plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. It's got to happen now. <laughs> I mean, offensive or not, it's cool. I don't think that's offensive at all. Yeah, like, we're chimps complimenting. Are yeah, we're complimenting them. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I. I've said it before on the podcast, and I'll say it again. I always believe that dreams have some sort of meaning. And I do entertain the idea that when you dream, you're stepping into an alternate reality, an alternate universe. Because, I mean, there are unlimited universes, right? Do you ever lift weights in your dreams? I mean, I probably have. I I can't think of a specific one, though. I don't think I ever have, now coming to think of it. It'd be interesting to feel like how that, how that. I've done pushups and yeah, it's like, uh, you just do them and you do them and it's easy. It never burns. Whoa. That's, it's cool. You have like unlimited strength. Yeah. So I will, maybe I'll dream about lifting weights tonight. I'm telling you, it's one of my goals. See, yours is to not go to jail. I want to learn how to lucid dream. (laughs) Dude, you can do it. It's, it's not, it's probably just as easy as going to jail. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna try so i know you have that that technique where you look at your hand to check 
Yeah, every time you, you go through a fingers. doorway, you look at your hand and you count your fingers. Okay. It has got to be through a doorway because you'll go through doorways in your dream and that will spark you to do the same thing. And when you do it... I just promise it works. It's crazy. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to try that. Do you have to write your dreams down to start remembering them? Uh, I would recommend it or at very least say them out loud to Alina. Okay. Uh, and that way that like if you verbalize it'll help you remember it for yeah. sure and yeah. probably i think it helps to have a little conversation about it too yeah well i was like talking about my dreams there just don't tell her if you have a gay dream <laughs> <laughs> dude i i would probably wouldn't be able to even mention any girls like i, I told no, her yeah, one no, and she no, got so upset no sex dreams yeah but i don't what have a dream i don't have them i have more pirate dreams <laughs> <laughs> dude that is sex right there <laughs> holy shit damn I don't know. Dreams are the best. I don't have them every night, but when I do, I'm very thankful. Even when they're scary, like my nightmares, they're not, I don't wake up and I'm like, oh God. Exactly, dude. It's hard for me to really distinguish what is a nightmare and what is not nowadays because when you're a kid, sometimes you have dreams and it is like, it messes you up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then like, it takes you a while to like realize that it was a dream kind of thing, you know? And it's like, it's I, it makes sense, too, because, like, you hadn't experienced as much of it. So now, getting older, you're able to tolerate this better. I'm sure some people get it on a continuum, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people handle it better than others. They evolve depending with you, on, too. That's true. You know, they, you can't hide your innermost, innermost thoughts and ideas and sentiments. And, like, I don't know. I think your dream dream landscape is reflective of like your subconscious mind so even a lot of things that you're not ever going to be consciously aware of until the dream shows it to you so hard to sort it out though like and to be able to comprehend if it was trying to it's like symbolic or portray something exactly like it's a lot of times dreams are just like what in the heck (laughs) is that like what does that mean like that you don't even ask yourself what it means because you know like it's just too weird to possibly mean anything yeah but they're sick i like them i like sleeping dude it's like it's like i try to remember if you read some of his stuff you read it and you're like what the heck (laughs) what does that mean but there are people out there who give pretty compelling uh like translations of these things and they can explain what it supposedly means according to them but yeah who really knows like you yeah. gotta take, I would take any, any dream interpretation with a grain of salt for sure. Cause it's like, how could you possibly know that? Yeah. And if you it, like, tell me how you could possibly know that and Can't. convince me of how that is legit. Yeah, dude. It's, it's crazy. That's a, uh, that's like one of my most research topics i just like to learn about it and i still don't know much because there's nothing conclusive with it like you're saying like you can't prove any of it i mean the fact is we know we know that we dream and we sort of know like the process to it um and the different stages of sleep but we don't necessarily understand why we dream there's very very little consistency if none at all um between dreamers and stuff oh no there is consistency there have been people that like unrelated people who had the the same same dream yeah and see the the same same person but there are there are uh also like thematic um frequent occurrences like dreams about losing your teeth like themes and stuff yeah like like why i've had a bunch of dreams about like teeth falling out like you pull a tooth out and you're like oh god dang it like oh man and then you just like kind of put it back in and it's like oh but it's loose (laughs) and then you wake up and you're like all right cool all my teeth are good um that is like a common dream that like people have so it's like wow how like what the heck yeah i get it i mean i don't want to lose my teeth either i think that's like close second goal is to not lose all my (laughs) teeth (laughs) damn so you're like the anti redneck who can diss on rednecks now sorry redneck (laughs) rednecks like going to jail (laughs) i mean i'm just saying there's probably a good percentage of them that have been to jail yeah you get a roof over your head you get a bed you get three hot ones yeah and you don't even need all your teeth to fit in that's true that's true they'll take you without teeth yep some might even prefer that. Yeah, the dentist has to do less work. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
we've covered a lot this podcast, so I just want to reflect for a quick second here and kind of look back. This is episode 20 proper. So 20 proper. 20 proper on the official Iron Will Collective count, 20 episodes. So it's been 10 episodes since we hit our first 10. And that was like our milestone thing yeah, that we yeah. were like, we want to be good at this by 10. I mean, I think we're doing a pretty good job coming out with some entertaining things to listen to. Uh, at least something that will hopefully not be boring. Yeah, well, the whole idea is to get you thinking and also to introduce different topics and different ideas that you might not have heard about before. And if you have heard about them, well, then you get an, you get two other perspectives here to add to your own. And you continue your quest for knowledge, too, because I think that's what we all share in common is we just don't want to stop growing. So anybody who's made it this far or who's enjoyed any of our content thus far, especially the podcast, being that they're slightly longer form here, um, I just appreciate all the, the hunger you have, the thirst to learn. And that allows us to it actually pushes me personally to learn more and then be able to talk about it here. Exactly. We want to learn together. It's fun to learn when it is subjects that are actually interesting to you. So with that being said, thank you very much for tuning in. Whether this has been, you've been with us from the beginning or this is your first episode. Thank you and have a good night. Good night.